We'll see. Well, let's get back a little bit uh, to COVID because I, I, I promised that up front. Yeah. That was one motivation that I wanted to come out because I knew I had a bunch of pre-recorded shows where we don't say anything about it because we didn't know it was a thing. Our, our government was lying to us and telling us not to be concerned, um, not to get political, but no. that's what they were. Um, so what? how has this changed not just your launch, but has this changed your, your writing life, your working life? It has changed my, my writing life. Um, you know, it's interesting, like the week before everything got real scary and we were all kind of told to go to our houses, um, the week before that, I got diagnosed with uh, flu influenza A. And so I was really sick for that week before there. So I like to tell people I was quarantining before quarantine was cool. But um, so I feel like I've had uh, three or four weeks at this point kind of... Uh, I haven't left the house much. Um, and I'm a guy who likes to go out and write. I always write at a coffee shop. Um, some days I'll write at a couple of different places because I'll bounce around. Um, it's been it's been hard. I, 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 uh, I also think that the news and what's happening in the world is just like this sort of constant drain on the back of your brain. Um, you know, social media is constantly, your phone's pinging with the next horrible thing and, and um, so I, I, I found it hard to work during this time. I'm hoping that I'll eventually get used to it because I think we may be here for a while. Um, and I'm hoping I'll eventually get used to it and start getting more. You know, I've, I've stayed up on my strip. Um, I've had to do some things leading up to the uh, launch of Wink, but my writing has, has suffered. Um, and... Uh, well, coming right up to a launch of a of a book that you've worked so long on and, and means so much to you, would that not be a little bit the case right now, even without the COVID nineteen, that you you would be that focused on a new project, Joe? It is, it is, and it's also just exciting. Uh, you know, um, uh, you, you start getting reviews, and you know, um, you know, people from the from the publisher are emailing me, and you know, hey, we need this. Hey, can you do this Q and A? Hey, can you you know fill things out? Um, so in, in, in that way, I'm, I'm ex excited enough that I'm distracted by it. And, um, you know, it, um, this past couple of weeks probably hasn't been the best time to write, period. Um, but, you know, then you add on the fact that you feel like you can't leave your house. Um, it makes it tougher. You know, I think there is a little part of me that feels really guilty. It feels like, oh, I'm in quarantine. I should be writing three novels and you know uh, come out of this thing with uh, you know just scads of stuff that I've written um, and drawn and painted and then all this I'm sure that. you've seen the uh, Shakespeare meme about writing King Lear in quarantine yeah yes and it's like and it's just like well I don't need that pressure um, nobody Who needs that, that finds that inspiration by the way oh well if Shakespeare could do it I guess here I am the next Shakespeare so it makes sense that I would <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not Shakespeare so, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, I'm, I've been frustrated with my ability to get work done uh, in these past few weeks, but I'm hoping I, I turn a corner here. Um, especially now that the book is out, I feel like there's been kind of some pressure building up, and now it's kind of released a little bit like, okay, the book is out, I can kind of kick back, and, um, you know, I, it, I'm going to start doing hopefully some, some digital school visits, things like that, once the schools get back in session. Um, but that won't happen for a little while. So uh, I think we're all going to have some time on our hands for the next month. Uh, so hopefully I'll, I'll get back into, into some writing. I know some author visits are still possible via Zoom. So a lot of classes are still convening a couple of hours a day online. Sure. Uh, so you can get in there, you can address an entire school. Now you might have the problem that some of those kids are going to be, you know, playing the Rumble video game and <laughs> ignoring the yeah. author. But I don't doubt it. <laughs> not all of them, but many yeah. of them you're thrilled and remember it forever. No, I don't. And their their COVID-19 story. When we I were in, Rob Harrell came to our school virtually and talked to us. That's true. true. That's true. It'll stand out. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I also just think it's kind of a scary time and everybody's got this certain level of anxiety that's just uh, hiding under the surface. And, uh, you know, it's sort of like a car battery where you leave the lights on. It's just kind of slowly ticking away at that. Um, so 
I, I guess eventually you get used to things, which is an awful thing to think that we'll get used to being in quarantine. But uh, if we're here long enough, I think um, I think we we're will. humans. Is what we do. We adapt. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I, I got thinking about it the other day. I'm like, is there going to be some part of me that's sad when this quarantine ends? <laughs> which is a really sick thing to think. But I'm like, uh, you know, I'm home with my dogs and uh, my wife, and we we you know make dinner every night and, and uh, play music and, and um, you know, I think it, maybe it's doing some good things for families and things right now. People are, I, I hope so. I hope the COVID is, uh, I hope there's an up, a, a silver lining to all of this. Yeah, I, I, I think that either way, there probably will be, but I'm a natural optimist, so I would think that. Yeah. Um, I've been, I, I'm glad we're talking about this because I know a lot of writers uh, watch and listen to the show uh, and are probably going through something similar. I've been putting that pressure on my, I was putting that pressure on myself uh, when, I, when I was also uh, sick uh, prior to the quarantine starting. I was like, okay, well, you can lay here feeling bad, but while you're feeling bad, get your laptop and <laughs> type a little bit. Start playing uh, away. Yeah. And uh, this this last week in particular, uh, you know, I had to tell a bunch of podcast people that they are podcast people, guests, potential guests for the show that, hey, let's let's back off and let's let's see just how bad this is going to get. Because I don't want to schedule something for you or with you for two weeks from now. I don't know what two weeks from now looks like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's just unfortunate. It's, it's a real anxiety. Like I said at the, at the top of the show, it's my first pandemic. I had no idea what to expect. It's it's making future planning difficult. Um, I am in a, a lucky position. My, my wife and I both work from home quite a bit prior to this. Um, so this is not a tremendous upset for us the way it is for some people. Although having my six-year-old uh, constantly underfoot is, is definitely um, is lovely. Oh, my God. Uh, how much I love him. But it would be nice if I could get him to go someplace for an hour so Daddy could finish the scene. But that's, you know. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, well, we'll get a routine down. We'll be all right. Yeah, but if uh, if you're putting that pressure on yourself, esteemed audience, if you're thinking about all the all the things you should be doing, how somebody out there is doing quarantine perfectly and it's not you, probably not. Uh, this is none of us have gone through this before. This is an extraordinarily terrifying time. Um, I usually try to avoid politics because I'm not a pundit. Um, but it does feel like an extra level of exasperation um, is I, I feel almost like I'm a Gothamite. Uh, and every time uh, Donald Trump speaks, it's like updates from the Joker about how he's poisoned us and <laughs> how bad it's going to get before Batman shows up. Yeah. Um, and that adds a, an, an extra level of, of unbelievable anxiety, I think, that uh, beyond the fact of just uh, uh, the, the plague itself. I, I hear you. <laughs> I generally try to keep my politics out of it, especially because I do sort of a family strip that runs in papers and all that. And uh, but yeah, I hear you, hundred uh, um, percent. It's it's been exasperating some of this stuff. Just you know, bad situation made worse at times. And um, yeah, sorry. No, so, no, no, you're good. Uh, so remember, esteemed audience, Rob can't talk politics. Rob Harrell. No politics. <laughs> I try to stay out of it. <laughs> the other Trust me, there are times when I want to get on and go nuts on Facebook, but I, I, uh, I always think, well, nope, remember your number of papers. So, and then I don't. <laughs> I Maybe that makes a pile sell. of uh, Facebook posts that were going to go up, and then at the last moment, my good sense kicked in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now they're yeah. just saved in a, in a file where I can maybe think about them for a couple of days before they go up. Yep. And those of you that uh, follow me on Facebook say, my God, well, we've seen what you what you actually <laughs> up, must be in that file. <laughs> Pretty bad. Uh, one, one more uh, thought on COVID and then, then we'll move away and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, probably flying saucers. Um, uh, but uh, we mentioned silver linings. And one thing that um, I do believe if I have one political thought in my head, it's that our society is and has been terribly disorganized for a while. We talk about the economy, and the economy is just an organization of the distribution of resources. That's all it is, and that's all it's been. And one thing that this epidemic is quickly making clear uh, is just how poorly organized our society has been when so many of us can't go a week, two weeks um, away from their job without 
wondering whether they're going to be able to pay all their their bills. Um, I hope that people will remember the billionaires who um, openly proposed uh, killing as many of us as as was necessary to keep the the Dow going. That's my hope for a silver lining. Is what should have been fixed a while ago will will finally hopefully be addressed.